we're going to show you a lot of things that are not science fiction, that are actually possible today. Let's get going. So, let's see if the technology... Metaverse is forecasted to be a 1.5 trillion industry, so quite, quite a big one. Um, we talked about my book uh, that you're happy to, to, to receive if you're interested. We also mentioned that every morning when we wake up, we do it for a purpose. I'm not sure what your purpose is, but it has to be something exciting. In our, my case, it's knowledge being a human right and how we can make it available, accessible, and affordable. There's a lot of studies here that looks into the metaverse and XR, and that shows that people learn faster, retain information longer, and make better decisions. a study on virtual reality learning. We found learners in VR required less time to learn, they had higher emotional connection to the content, higher confidence, and were less distracted during the training. Learner, faster, decide better. And you can see that in many analyses that we've seen around the VR globe. So, um, if this is so good, how come not every student, every worker in Korea has it today? Why is that? Because there are problems, and there are quite a few problems. The first one that I would like to mention is that there are solutions. So game engines today are required to create these things, and game engines are very difficult to, to use. How many people know game engines here? One person. Okay. You are the minority, I need to point out. Uh, the other thing is lack of um, content, good educational content. That's a problem. The third one is lack of devices, what people perceive as necessity, which are uh, the glasses. Those are big obstacles to, to, to reach. So our commitment has been to uh, solve those issues. And how do we do that? We created, four years ago, a platform called Eon XR that makes it super easy for my mom, she's 82, to create application in XR. She's doing cooking classes. If she can do it, and we have a lot of illiterate people in Africa that are using it. They can read and write, but they can walk and talk. And I'll show you today how you can walk and talk and create metaverse. Uh, the third aspect is we have a big library. We started with one million assets. I'm proud and pleased to say we are up to five million assets. And hopefully next year, if I'm still invited, we will probably double that at least. We also found a solution that works seamlessly in augmented reality, virtual reality, mixed reality. So you never have to think. You create it once and you can use it many times. So we thought we kind of solved the problem with that. Unfortunately, that wasn't the case. Then appeared the second problem. I don't want my kids to do that. I don't know about you. This guy was several days sleeping, eating with a headset on. He has this pack and he doesn't see really what he eats. I mean, that's depressing. If this is the future, I don't want metaverse. <laughs> We need to have a future where you're not in escaping reality. We need to have a future where we embracing reality. So the next product, we had to solve this issue. So how did we do that? We created something called Merged XR. So very easily to be able to scan reality in seconds, labs, rooms, whatever. And once you do that, when you have a digital twin, use artificial intelligence. You're going to hear artificial intelligence a lot today because we are using it everywhere. To inject knowledge. Remember the bottle? So the knowledge that I have to turn it, the knowledge that it can deflate, all this has to be injected in that spatial model. And we are doing it with this called Merged XR. Contextual knowledge when you need it, as you need it. So we thought that was pretty powerful. But then we went to the third problem. The third problem is that it's not fun to be alone. <laughs> Most people, you need to learn. Now, sometimes to learn alone is good because you can focus. But most time you want to test if you got it right or you get frustrated because you don't understand something. So learning together is very helpful. And ideally learning from the best. I would like to sit if I want to learn philosophy at Sorbonne in Paris, right? 
or I want to be in Stanford or MIT to learn the latest about technology. So we do that with spatial meetings. So this solution teleports you anytime, anywhere. You have your own avatar. You can talk, you can walk. Even just having a phone, you don't have to have a headset. That's interesting because everybody in this room has a mobile phone, right? Who has not a mobile phone? Doesn't exist in Korea, it's impossible, right? Um, so with it, what you have in your pocket, you already can do everything I've shown you so far. And even the next one. So the ability to be anytime, anywhere and communicate in a very easy way is enabled with spatial meetings and also uh, engage. Then we came to the big problem, metaverse. <laughs> because now you're not talking about individual experience or individual environments, we talk about worlds, right? That contain potentially millions of things. Now, it is very time consuming to build the metaverse. Um, the avatars need to be very realistic. Um, there needs to be a community that are so there's a lot of problems you have to solve here. Uh, you have to do no coding, basically. So uh, I was frustrated with that. And I said, what about if you can create the metaverse just by walking and talking? I like to walk. I like to talk. But I don't do it like that. And we realized that that's not so easy. But today I'm going to show you. This is a product that was just released about two weeks ago. So you're on, among the first Koreans that will experience it. Okay, ready. So we call this solution Metaverse Builder. What it means is that it's natural world building. I use jet engines like this in a lot of my projects. And uh, you can create a lot of things. And in fact, rather than doing that, I'll, I'll show you how it works. So this was recorded two weeks ago uh, in a playroom in Portugal. So you can see the pool is to the left. I'm walking and talking. So I like engine. So I said engine. Immediately the system identified from 5 million assets a couple of engine. I selected one. Then I immediately suggest text to speech, images. The system does it for me. Videos, PDFs around that engine. It creates what we call a knowledge portal. A knowledge portal can contain visuals, videos, PDFs text-to-speech in 80 languages, including Korean. So now, going back to my bottle, I have the 3D model, but I inject contextual knowledge into it. Okay, so that's a pretty good thing. I can scale it, I can expand it, I can add multiple objects. So I want another engine, a different engine. So now I have, now I want to test the knowledge for the students, so I say quiz. So just by selecting, for example, an annotation, I can create a quiz. What's this? What type of engine is it? Identify a part, the compressor. Just click one button. Locate where the outlet or the nozzle is. Just click one button. Immediately, I built my knowledge portal. Step-by-step -step procedure. OK. Now I want to take it apart, understand how the disciplinary works. I record it, and guess what? Like Gene in the bottle, an avatar appears instead of me. He's much younger, better looking, but you know, that's, that's a choice. Uh, and this avatar suddenly allows me to build this, uh, do the instruction for step by step. Now, uh, so now I'm trying to do a memo. And of course, I do it in Swedish. I select among the languages there, not Korean. And I say, hey, idag ska vi lära oss om hur, hur olika motorer fungerar i vanliga bilmotorer och andra saker. So, but if my friend in Guatemala opens this, it's going to be in Spanish. And come some idag, it will be in Korean when you open it. <laughs> so, that's uh, what you can do. What? Oh, I missed this one, but that was artificial intelligence. If I don't know what it is, I just take a picture of it. Immediately, the system identifies what it is and starts to provide knowledge. So this uh, step by step, learn by watching, uh, watch by learning. You remember my simulator when I said land the aircraft? We can do the same with this engine. So I can record procedures and then play it back and understand how this works, the disassembly procedure. 
and then I'll do it myself as a student, and eventually I'm guided and test my score. So now my score says, did I do the right sequence? Did I do the right performance? How many steps were incorrect? How many steps did I miss? What did I unnecessarily steps? Like a simulator, but now for this. Now I want to put it in a context. I put it in a room, I select a classroom. Although I'm still in Portugal in a playroom, I put my items there, and suddenly I created my first metaverse room. It took me three minutes and 46 seconds to do it. I never typed anything. I only walked and talked. And I can tell you that we can do the same to build a big metaverse, not just a room. So that's walking and talking. Now I can also record it, put it on social media. Uh, I can uh, generate the video on the fly so other friends can, can join me in this venture. So this way, you can do a lot of stuff. Everything you see here, I did it in the last week using this. So I created everything you see in this video. And this is probably 5% of I, what I played with. And keep in mind, I don't do this more than maybe 10% of my time. Again? So um, nice that's my wife in a and church China somewhere warrior. with our friends. From One friend is from China. Uh, hi. That's Richie. How are you? Uh, hi, we are in the metaverse in a church uh, in a mixed reality environment. Oh, there he is. That's a football play. I was in Qatar, FIFA, FIFA football. How many FIFA fans here? So FIFA wants us to do this. So you see the football player there. Uh, that's a plumbing application. I had to learn about plumbing because they are leaking pipes. Uh, the swimming pool, some kids don't want to go to school. They want to be in swimming pool. So I found out a way how to teach them biology by still being by the pool, swimming pool. Um, how about architecture? I did architecture on the patio, uh, and I entered rooms that were quite interesting. Um, heart. I was in a hotel, I think in Kuwait, and I had to learn about anatomy. So I did it pretty fast there into my room. Again? Um, I love the British Museum, so I had a chance to take all the artifacts from British Museum to me. So that's good. Now let's talk about the real metaverse, a whole world now. So we just recently launched with our friends in Thailand, Infinite Land. This is the land of education through collaboration. It's a decentralized community platform where creative minds can gather, express, and exchange innovative ideas. And um, again, I created the metaverse for this myself, <laughs> my own part of the metaverse. And now I'm going to show you how I buy land using different technology and how I experience that. So let's go. Uh, so we call it Infinity Land, and we want to do an Infinite Land or a Metaverse Land here in Korea. So if any people are interested, contact me after this. So first you select, you buy your land, you select your buildings, your rooms. We have tons of them. You can build your own. You select your Thai avatar, your English avatar, your French avatar. I build about 30. It takes about 45 seconds to build an avatar. Arabic, Chinese Niha. Uh, hola, Zdrasvitya. I enter Hi. my room. Hi, Brock. What's up? So I invite one friend to yeah. this room. I can have six, old, seven, twenty, thirty friends, old, uh, and we all meet in this. I, 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 I invited them to a Swedish place. Now I want to populate it with lessons, museums, paintings, uh, to make it more exciting. And I want to learn about physics, chemistry, geology, anatomy, space engineering, cosmology, archaeology. Geology, oh, agriculture, <laughs> why not mining, medical equipment, dentistry, carpentry, electronics, plumbing, welding. Really nice. yeah, so uh, mention it, we have it. And now I want to explore the room. So I'm physically holding my phone yeah, like this can, uh, and I'm walking around. We'll go through this wall right here. Um, and I can go in portals. We think portals are like links. So now I'm actually, he's in California, you can see that. He's in Laguna Beach. But then when I penetrate the wall, boom, I'm in France. Oh, that's cool. In some type of uh, graffiti world. 
And guess what? I'm meeting a friend from Korea <laughs> uh, and a friend from China. And they happen to be in France, but in the end of the tunnel, you can see California. So it beats a little bit confusing. <laughs> Where am I? With Avatar, you can also ask the question, who am I? So I was here outside yesterday. You can see this is uh, Sheila Hotel. Um, I, I was at the tax-free zone. Um, this is still in the pool. I got the... This is shopping at Harrods in London. Uh, I was shopping perfume with my wife, so I have a guided avatar tour at the Royal Albert Hall. This is the Natural History Museum. This whale does not exist there, but it exists persistently tracked in our app. <laughs> uh, so we are tracking those things in real life. So think about being a poor student at the university in Korea. And you can only afford a beanie bag, no table, no couch, no paintings, no nothing. Without this technology, you can have persistently tracked Mona Lisa wall painting. Thursdays is Hawaii night. <laughs> so the whole room changes. Uh, today I use my phone, but if I have a headset, uh, I use that. So this is the metaverse, right? This is the metaverse. And of course, it can help you with learning in many different things. Archaeology, I just pick things that interest me, like archaeology or space engineering or cosmetology. That's not my interest. My, my wife is a little bit interested in that. Art and paintings or, uh, you know, what have you. Uh, all these aspects are now covered. So in Korea, you have, you are very good at technical vocation training. We cover all this or uh, fine arts, or health science. Okay, so let's summarize. What can you do in the metaverse, knowledge metaverse? You can learn. You can either get uh, your library items, 5.1 million uh, items, which hopefully next time will be 10. You can scan your environments. You can import your CAD data, or data in general. You can take pictures using artificial intelligence inside the application. Uh, to recognize what you're looking at. You can have knowledge portal that contains information. You can have assessment portals that very validates the knowledge of the students. You can walk and talk to create or experience. That's on a beach in Thailand. That's my next stop. It's not Thailand, actually, it's Indonesia in Bali for a month, so uh, you need to do that. Then avatar instructions for and also assessment to assess if someone is doing the right stuff. Uh, and finally, collaboration, the ability to be with other people in different environments. Learn, train, perform, collaborate. Okay, so if we talk about education, where can you use this uh, technology? You can use it in elementary school. That example you see there is in France. Uh, kids, this is before pandemic. Um, the other example you see there is in Vietnam, where tens of thousands of students are using this today. Today. They are, so I was thinking, if there's so many students using the metaverse on a daily basis, how come Korea doesn't do it? You guys are number one in many things. Definitely the fastest one. So I haven't seen as much in Korea yet, but I'm happy to expand that. Um, and then, of course, uh, you have other areas like technical vocational training. Uh, you can see the lady gets CPR there. No country or school can afford to buy all the MRI devices, all the CNC machines, all the engines. An engine costs $42 million. So that's not possible. You definitely cannot buy the particle accelerator in CERN, <laughs> but we have it. So the ability to have all this at your fingertips anytime, anywhere for K-12, for TVET, for high education, um, for hospital experience, for uh, factory environments, um, it's endless. All we need is brains and energy to inject the knowledge and own that own knowledge. That knowledge should be owned by Koreans your own knowledge, not hijacked by others. Okay. So, I'm trying to get through all this. There you go. 
Now, there's much more information here which I don't want to bore you with, but what you saw working here on the phone works also on Oculus, work also on all any 30 devices. Uh, you also have a back end if you want to track your students and see how they are doing. Now, this is used for academia, but it's also used by industry. So, in industry, we've seen a 63% to 92% reduction in training costs. So, companies like Boeing, Airbus, Exxon, Caterpillar, Shell, even are using this technology today to reduce training cost and increase productivity. Using AR, Boeing was able to increase productivity uh, by 25% and reduce the wiring time with 40%. So, the good news, we are not alone. Uh, two or three years ago, there were about 25 countries that implemented this fully nationally. We are now more than 100 countries. I was here in July 2021, that's me there uh, in the room. And since then, we've seen a dramatic growth during the pandemic, 800%. 800%. Now, which industry do you see 800%? <laughs> it took me 23 years to reach 800%. It used to be 10%, 15%. So, everybody's joining the party throughout the world. Of course, America started. Uh, we started in, during the pandemic with LACC, for example. This is Los Angeles Community College. Uh, for nurse training, automobile training, uh, even Mississippi, places that normally are not associated with high tech are using this. Um, colleges are even more use, using this than, for example, universities. Um, Canada follows suit not long after. Um, of course, we have even places like Morocco ministers now joining this. We started in Morocco with 60,000 users. We are now going to 600,000 users and it's becoming national. India is very fast. India, it's a big competition, I would say, to China. We started there with 40,000 students and the president endorsed it. We also had a big honor, this is two weeks ago, the prime minister of uh, Thailand is inaugurating the Infinity Land. Uh, the, deputy, the Minister of Education is rolling this out through the universities. Uh, we just signed another agreement for 50,000 users in Thailand. Mexico is doing this. Even small places like Jamaica so are using this because they are on the islands. Honduras, Panama, Dominican Republic, London, East London University. The Scottish are doing it, the Swiss. So I can go on and go on. I don't want to bore you from, but everywhere, even places like Romania, Singapore, Singapore is the lead, I would say. They started with this 10, 15 years ago. More than 80% of the schools are using it today. That's a lot. China. China started about six years ago, and they are perhaps the most aggressive ones. And uh, we collaborate actually very well with China. Most people are a little bit afraid of China because of IP, intellectual properties, but... We have a very good experience there. Vietnam, Cambodia. This is the Minister of Education, Cambodia there. Uh, Indonesia, South Africa, and so on and so on. Even places like Africa now. This is the Minister of Education in Ethiopia that's rolling this out. They can't afford to do it the normal way. Okay, and this is actually last week. Here's the Deputy Prime Minister of Kuwait. Of course, they have a lot of money now because of the oil. <laughs> so so uh, he invited me to his sofa and his room was much bigger than the White House, the Oval Room, I would say. It was interesting. He's also Minister of Oil, Minister of Electricity, Water, Renewable Energy, and now they are doing national rollouts. So it's very exciting to, to, to work with them. Uh, so I'll stop with this and ask why are we doing this? We are now instituting grants. So Korea has access to a grant that we can invest up to 150 million US dollars. 150 million dollars to do national rollouts. Now why would we do that? First of all, we have a non-profit called um, 
uh, Learn for Life that my wife is leading uh, and uh, donates together with other non-profit organizations this type of technology. The other thing is we cannot build the metaverse. The metaverse has to be built by you. We can help you, but you need to own it and you need to control it. Very important. Um, so those are some of the reasons. Now, what's in it for partners here? Uh, we don't have time to listen to their voices, but they are speaking loudly from across the world. And it sounds a little bit muffled, but there they are. Um, so what's in it for you? What would be the benefit by working together and taking advantage of the grant? I would say a couple of things. Number one, it will help to transform knowledge transfer. Workers, students can learn faster, retain information longer, make better decisions. Two, it will enhance the educational quality. We've seen a huge difference between, uh, let's say, schools that are using normal technology like uh, Zoom or uh, this type of e-learning or classroom versus the ones that are using this type of experiential learning. Students are more engaged, more interested, uh, more, how shall I say, retain more information uh, and much more happier by using this. The third reason is you need to build your own IP, your Korean IP. I meet so many people say, oh, we need to do digital transformation. But how do you do it? This is a way. I'm not saying it's the only way, but it's a way. And last, you can get a return on investment. The best benefit for you to join us, if you think about money, is to join because if you can create content, Korean content, we have 42 million users, like an eBay for learning, where you can publish it, and the sales revenue goes to you, 70%. So this is a way for you to, Korea, that's so famous for many areas, such as, for example, technical vocation training, to use the marketplace, Eon Marketplace, to publish it. So we are willing to help. The grant I was talking about is not in cash, it's in infrastructure, platforms, hardware, know-how, required in order to make this happen. Okay, so contact me if you are interested. If you are a university, we can talk about how to do this. If you are an academic institution, if you're a government or a company, we have solutions. Last but not least, I want to talk two minutes about, uh, one minute about the Metaverse Academy. This is the expansion of jobs in the Metaverse. You can see it's an exponential curve. We need to recruit smart people in this area. So if you're interested, let me know. And nice thing about it, they are quite well paid. An administrator can make $95,000. A developer can make $125,000. Now, if you live in Rwanda, <laughs> it's a very good salary. But even in Korea, I think it's not a bad salary. And you can see here, those are people that are working for us. Uh, the gentleman to the left is from Senegal. The lady is from Rwanda. Uh, the gentleman there is from New Jersey. The, the, other, the third lady there is from uh, uh, Colombia, Pakistan, Sweden. Digital nomads, digital nomads. Now, to help all this, I was very proud early this year that we were introduced on NASDAQ uh, at a valuation of $655 million. As you know, the technology is going up and down all the time, but we also raised another $100 million in cash so we can continue our rapid expansion. And that also enables us to provide more support for the grants programs. Okay. So, you can see some example. The first one is from Singapore. The second one is how this is deployed in different governments around the globe. And with that, I have three minutes left, I think, and three seconds. And I want to thank you. You've been a very good audience. I can see in your eyes that uh, <laughs> you are responding positively. Um, if there is any questions, I have about two minutes and 52 seconds to, to see if I can answer them. If not, thank you so much. As you say in Korea, kam And I look. And thank you so much for our host. Thank you very much, Mr. Dan Ledger-Scar, for sharing 
your precious time with us.